So we already spoke about the concept of rate law. And we said that rate law is a mathematical representation between the relationship of the concentration of reactants and our reaction rate. Now we also said that rate law can only be determined using experimental results. And that's exactly right. Now in this lecture, we're going to look at the following forward reaction and try to determine our rate law using some experimental data. <coughs> So let's begin. One mole of methyl acetate reacts with one mole of hydroxide to produce one mole of acetate ion and one mole of methanol. Now let's conduct the following three experiments in which we measure in each experiment the concentration of methyl acetate and hydroxide and we find the initial rate. Now our goal is to see how our initial rate changes when we change our concentration of reactants. Now the first experiment will serve as a control. We're going to basically compare our second and third experiment to our first experiment and see how our initial rate changes. So in the first experiment we see that we have 0.05 molar of initial methyl acetate and 0.05 molar of our initial hydroxide. Now when these two concentrations are 0.05 each, our initial rate is 0.0002. Next, our goal is to change one of these guys and see how our initial rate is influenced. So let's keep our initial hydroxide concentration the same and only change our initial concentration of methyl acetate. So let's double it. So we double it to 0.1 molar and this guy stays at 0.05 molar and we see that our initial rate also doubles to 0.0004 now that means that because we double this and our initial rate doubles these guys are directly proportional in other words if you double this guy you must double the initial rate so let's conduct the same exact experiment but now we keep our initial concentration of methyl acetate the same and we double our concentration of our initial hydroxide. So let's stay at 0.1 molar and go from 0.05 molar of our hydroxide to 0.1 molar. We see that when we double our initial concentration of hydroxide, our initial rate also doubles. That means that our hydroxide is also proportional to our rate. So now with this result, we can find our rate law. So rate law is the following equation. The rate of my reaction in the forward direction is equal to the rate constant of the forward reaction times the concentration of methyl acetate times the concentration of hydroxide. Now notice my exponents are each one. That means there is a direct relationship between our rate of reaction and our concentration. In other words, if we double our concentration of methyl acetate while keeping this guy the same, we double our rate of reaction. Likewise, if we double this guy while keeping our methyl acetate the same, we also double our reaction rate. But if we double each guy, if this guy is multiplied by two and this guy is multiplied by two, that means this guy is quadrupled he's multiplied by 4. So, now I have this, I have this, and I know my rate of reaction. But I don't know my rate constant. Now the rate constant can also be found using our experimental results. The way we do it is we choose any experiment we like and we plug in the data points and we find our KF. So we let's use the first experiment. Let's plug in 0.05 for this guy, 0.05 for this guy, and 0.0002 for our rate of reaction in the forward direction. So we plug these guys in and we solve for Kf and we get 0.0002 divided by 0 0.5, 0 0.05 times 0.05 gives us 0.08. So that means our Kf, our rate constant for this reaction going this way is 0.08. So now we plug this into our reaction and we find the final rate law to be the rate of our forward reaction is equal to 0.08 times the concentration of our methyl acetate to the first power times the concentration of our hydroxide to the first power. So now let's think about it. 
So our initial concentration increases and that increase increases our initial rate. Why is that? Well think about it. The only way that these guys react is if they collide. And if you increase the concentration of either guy, we have more collisions happening. And if there are more collisions happening, that means our rate should increase. In other words, these guys will convert quicker to our products from the reactants. Now likewise, if you decrease either concentration, our rate should decrease because we have less collisions occurring, so our rate constant will be less and therefore our rate will be less.